Hello everyone, welcome to GRIS Academy Daily Editorial Analysis. My name is Harish Amdi and I am presenting you editorials from the Hindu dated 18th October 2023 and these are our topics for discussion today. So let us begin. So our first topic for today, burning topic, same sex marriages. So as many of you must have heard yesterday Supreme Court gave a judgment regarding this same sex marriages. So, Supreme Court yesterday gave a judgment regarding the same sex marriages. This case is Supriyo versus Union of India. This is the name of the case and yesterday Supreme Court delivered its judgment in four separate parts. So, it gave four separate judgments on four related topics. We will see all of those. So, straight forward. First, outrightly Supreme Court has stated that it cannot legalize same sex marriages. So, the whole issue is basically about the same sex marriages. We will start from very basics like what is LGBTQ and what is same sex marriage and what is the whole issue about how it started, how it is going on, we will see everything. So see, just yesterday there are uh, so many news, there are so many articles in today's newspaper all from the Hindu. So there are three related news articles and one editorial also. So this is a very important topic, I am pretty sure there will be at least one question in this year main in upcoming 2024 main on this topic. So as I said one of the news is that Supreme Court has stated that even though same sex marriages are not a fundamental right. So yesterday Supreme Court stated that same sex marriages are not a fundamental right. Still Supreme Court has clarified that trans persons have right to marry. So first let us start from what is transgenders and what is this same sex marriages etc. So basically these are the groups who are called queer. What is the meaning of queer? Queer means something different. So when people in common parlance use the word queer, they mean something different from the mainstream. Okay. So all of these people are called queer in a broad sense. It is not a valid term but it is a common parlance. So, all of these people who are not heterosexual in the traditional sense are classified as LGBTQIA+. So, we will see one by one. What is L? L stands for lesbian. What is lesbian? Lesbian is a woman who gets attracted towards another woman. So, women are normally in most cases attracted for, towards men. But when a woman gets attracted towards other woman, she is called a lesbian. What is gay? G stands for gay. So what is gay? When a man gets attracted to another man, he is called gay. Next, bisexual. Normally, a person gets attracted to the one opposite sex. But if the person gets attracted to both the sexes or more than one sex, uh, here that is bisexual. That person is called bisexual person. So, next one is transgender. What is transgender? T stands for transgender. Now, there are two concepts. One is called cisgender, one is transgender. First, you understand that sex and gender both are different. Sex basically refers to our own uh, physical organs. So, when a man uh, bonds on earth, he, he bonds with some organs, some male organ. But there is no guarantee that when he grows up, let's say 20 years, he became 20 years of age, by that time he may feel as a woman, he may identify as a woman. It is possible biologically, it may be rare but it is possible. So when he grows up, the sex assigned to him at birth but the sex he feels inside. He gets attracted to other men and he wants to dress like a woman. And uh, there are many things, whatever the society attaches to, attaches to the female gender, that is what attracts to this particular person, that is what resonates to this particular person, this is what I should be doing. I am not supposed to do what men do, I am supposed to do what women do. So when such kind of a person who feels different from the sex assigned at birth, he is called a transgender. So see, his sex and gender differs, but when the sex assigned at birth and the gender he feels both are same, he is called a cisgender, cis means same. 
the whatever the sex assigned at birth remains with him throughout his life. But for a transgender, the uh, inner sex, the gender he feels is different from the sex assigned at the birth. So, doctor sees at the first look, says, okay, you got a boy, you got a girl. But when he grows up, even though he, he was a boy at birth, he might feel he is a girl. So, that is what transgender. So, I hope you understood cisgender and transgender. So, what among the cisgender, all these people are cisgender. Whatever the stand at birth, normal heterosexual people. So, a man who gets attracted to female and a female who gets attracted to a male are cisgender people. Along with these people, these lesbians also cisgender people because they remain with their same sex. If a woman was assigned female at birth, when she grows up, she remains a woman, she identifies as a woman, but the attraction she feels towards is another woman, not man. So, that is what lesbian, she is a cisgender, but she is not heterosexual, she is a cisgender homosexual woman, same with gays, okay, bisexual also same, but transgenders are different, they feel heterosexually, so they get attracted towards the opposite sex, but they are not cisgender, they are transgender person having heterosexual orientation. So, some transgender people identify as opposite sex. Uh, he may appear as a male outside, but he, he might uh, identify as a woman or he may even undergo some procedure to convert himself as a woman. So, transgenders are particularly different from all these rest of people. So, Supreme Court, while rejecting the right to marry of all these people, Supreme Court has stated that these transgender people can marry under the existing le legislation because existing legislation says only one thing. A man and a woman both can marry. A man and a woman can marry. So, uh, whatever the birth assigned at uh, uh, sex assigned at birth is irrelevant because even he might change. Suppose a woman become a man over the year. Now, she is a man who feels attraction towards another woman. So, ultimately, the marriage is between uh, opposite sexes. So, existing laws because of the technicality allow marriages for a transgender person. But uh, when a woman marries another woman, when a woman wants to marry another woman or when a man wants to marry another man, existing laws become somewhat ambiguous and they do not, uh, the terminology do not accept. So, Supreme Court stated based on the existing laws, no same sex marriage as of now cannot be allowed and without the legislative support, court itself cannot give that fundamental right to marry. So, what Supreme Court is saying? Marriage is not a fundamental right. A law made by the parliament explicitly has to be given that right to that particular person to have that same sex marriage. If the parliament does not make a law allowing same sex marriage, then Supreme Court cannot give a right for same sex marriage. So, that is what Supreme Court said fundamentally. So, Q. Q stands for queer or questioning. So, as I said, holding is also called queer. Again, another narrow interpretation of Q is queer or questioning. So, L for, L for lesbian, G for gay, B for bisexual, T for transgender, Q for questioning or queer. So, these people are not sure about their sexual identity. So, whatever they feel attraction to is somewhat dif uh, different from the normal people. Uh, normal people may find it odd. So, their sexual orientation is different and it is different from these other things also, from normal uh, heterosexual people, cisgender people and this LGB also, LGBT also. So, questioning or queer is also another type. Next, intersex. These people um, uh, get both the organs, okay. Both male and female organs exist in same person. So, they are called intersex, intersex. When a person has both male and female organs within the same body, he, he is called intersex. This happens very rarely, but it does happen in humans. Next, asexual. Person is not completely sexual at all. He does not feel, he or she does not feel any attraction. So, he, he or she is an asexual person. So, he does not like sexual kind of touch or feeling with anyone. No attraction. So, these are six main kinds, six or seven main kinds. Plus is to refer to any other orientation other than this. So, uh, we are gathering more knowledge. Till now, we have ignored all the other genders except male and female traditionally. But with the science growing continuously and uh, that liberalness, we are accepting every uh, deviation also. So, more and more orientations uh, keep coming and we, we are getting to know more and more and about the nature. So, 
so that is what this, this cluster represents, this cluster represents whatever the remaining gender orientation. So, I hope you have, you have understood this LGBTQ IA plus concept. Now, understand that existing case is related to the marriage rights of all these people. So, as a combining term for all, all these, it is called queer marriages. So, when I say queer marriages in the upcoming slides, I mean marriage rights of all these people. Again, it is a misnomer, but still everyone calls it same sex marriages also. It is, these are not same sex marriages. If you take transgender, they are not same sex marriages. Yes, Supreme Court clarified. Okay, only some particular people are asking for same sex marriage. So, when I refer, refer to same sex marriages or queer marriages, both I mean the same term and I mean marriage rights of all these people. Again then, notice this, as I said, this is the case, ongoing case. Uh, you have to ref, uh, remember this name, case law, Supreme Court versus Union of India. So, in Supreme versus Union of India, Supreme Court has clarified that right to marry is not a fundamental right for same sex couples, for this queer group, not ordinary people, for this queer group, right to marry is not a fundamental right. Supreme Court has clarified that. So, while this clarification, there are fundamentally four basic issues in the whole uh, judgment. So, what are these four issues? One is marriage, second one is adoption, third one is civil unions. I will explain what is civil unions. Next one is special marriage act. So, there are four concepts, special marriage act, marriage, adoption, right to enter civil unions. So, these four things Supreme Court has clarified in yesterday's judgment. So, first one, let us start with right to marry. So, this petitioner on behalf of this uh, queer groups have petitioned before the Supreme Court saying like every other person, every normal person, every so called normal person, we have the right to marry. Right to marriage is a fundamental right. Everybody when they love someone regardless of their own gender or the gender of the other person feels the need to get close. Ultimately marriage is nothing but a union of love. Okay? We may attach social or legal values to it. But ultimately, at the at the base, marriage is nothing but a union of two adults, basis on love. Okay, basis on love. That emotion is a common element across marriages, across all religions. So these people are saying we have that right to marriage, but Supreme Court denied it. Supreme Court saying, sorry, we cannot give you that right. It is a right of the legislature. Court cannot give through an order. If you take something called privacy, there is a case called Puttaswami case. Puttaswami versus Union of India, 2017, 2017, Swami versus Union of India, 2017. By this time, when this case is being heard, Parliament did not make a law on privacy. Privacy is not a fundamental right in 2017, but Supreme Court explicitly interpreted Article 21 stating that right, right to privacy is a fundamental right. Privacy is a fundamental right of every person. Whatever a person does behind the four walls in his own time, so you cannot peek in it. It is his own uh, personal right to keep it secret. So, court can give something as a fundamental right. Court can interpret the constitution and dictate something as a fundamental right. But in this case, court has declined to do it. Court said, we are leaving it to the legislature. In this case, legislature is the proper authority because Marriage is not just a normal marriage. In India, marriage is associated with many entitlement also. See, uh, when marriage comes, there are many related uh, things also come, like inheritance. Insurance. Property. Alimony. These are just some examples, there are many things like that. Who inherits the property of a father? His sons or daughters, okay. So, if a person does not marry, uh, some other people or his unrelated sons may not claim as a lawful or legal sons and daughters, may or may not. Again, insurance. If a person pays the insurance premium, when he or she dies, okay, there will be a nominee, usually his spouse or his children or his parents. So, that insurance amount in most cases go to the spouse. So, marriage has a equivalence to the blood bond. Similarly, property rights. 
So, usually people inherit the uh, property of the their partner or their parents. Again, alimony. Uh, alimony. So, if a couple divorces, the weaker spouse have the right of alimony from the uh, that ending spouse, whom on his or her survival depends. So, there are many associated entitlements related to marriage in India. It is not just a normal union uh, which people agree and uh, they can dissolve it whenever they want. It, it is not that simple right now. Right now, marriage is associated with many legal issues. So, marriage when you give a right to marry for that person, you are automatically giving him many rights and responsibilities also. So, that is why this is a big issue because two people can marry silently within the house, no one knows and they can call themselves married couple. So, that is not they want, they want that social acceptance, legal entitlement. So, when we marry, we celebrate, we call it a wedding, we organize a function, we invite all the relatives. So, marriage is essentially a social, a social event. So, that kind of social acceptance these people are seeking from the Supreme Court and such kind of legal entitlements also these people are seeking. So, Supreme Court unfortunately refused it to them. Okay. So, that is what the marriage is about. Next look at the adoption. Okay, here it is special marriage act and adoption will come next. So, as I said four issues, marriage, adoption, special marriage act and then um, civil union. Okay, civil union. Will I explain everything? So, special marriage act. First understand that special marriage act 1954. What is this special marriage act 1954? So, usually till 1950s, India with its diversity, with its various religions, various castes, the rules of marriage are set by the religions themselves or caste rules. Okay. So, everyone is divided into various groups. Hindus marries only within Hindus. Muslims marries only within Muslims. Uh, that particular caste marries within only that caste. So, endogamy is prevalent in India, but if anyone wants to cross the line, if they do not believe in their caste, if they do not believe in that kind of religion, I mean, they, they love that other person so much, uh, they do not mind that religion or caste barrier. Society did not allow it till that 1950s. They do not have any legal sanction or legal uh, right to escape that social obstruction, social barrier. So, in 1954, Government of India has made an act, parliament has made an act giving that right to the interfaith couples or intercaste couples. So, when uh, caste or faith of the people do not match, that marriages under the personal laws does not allow it. If you take a Muslim personal law, there will be Muslim personal law. Under the Muslim personal law, only two Muslims can marry. Again, Hindu personal law also, it is codified into four acts. You can just Google about Hindu personal laws. Okay, there are four acts related to the Hindu personal law, Hindu Marriage Act, etc. So they codify how Hindus should marry, whom Hindus should not marry, how that inheritance within Hindus work. So all the personal laws of the Hindus regarding the adoption, uh, inheritance, marriage, everything, etc., were codified into four laws. We, even within these laws, interfaith marriages it does not accept. These laws does not accept marriage between a Hindu and non-Hindu. So, all the traditional personal laws does not give any space for interfaith marriages. So, the special marriage act was brought so that two adults regardless of the religion or caste or any other kind of barrier they can marry. So, understand the spirit behind this law. This is to permit to adults when society does not allow it because of religion or caste. For no other purpose because of religion or caste barrier special marriage act was made. So, the petition has asked this act here and there, this act says marriage between man and woman, man and woman, man and woman, man and woman. So, they say a man and woman of two religions can marry under this act. So, everywhere it says of only two genders, it speaks of only two genders, man and woman, man and woman. So, these petitioners are saying this act is inherently discriminatory because it recognizes only two genders, man and woman. So, please uh, read this act as as applicable to all other genders also, other than man and woman. As we see, LGBTQ to all these genders, the petitioners are asking Supreme Court to apply it or to cross down the particular relevant provisions which talks about only man and woman. 
So, either you allow us or you re re remove the rule altogether. So, either you allow us equal to men and women or you just remove the rule which says only men and women can marry in this way. So, this is a very difficult proposition before Supreme Court because first of all that intent behind the marriage is only to promote interfaith and interreligious marriages not to uh, take care of this gender issues. Okay, Gender issues has to be dealt separately through parliament because the spirit of the act is not with this uh, intention. So, Supreme Court is sorry we cannot do anything. All five judges same as in the marriage case all five judges disagreed no we cannot tinker with special marriage act. Next third one adoption. So, again I am saying marriage, special marriage act, adoption and the civil union. So, four things third one next right to adopt a child. Now, there is a law on adoption, two laws in India guide adoption, one is Hindu adoption and maintenance act. So, one of the four Hindu laws I have said just now, this is one of the four Hindu personal laws, Hindu adoption and maintenance act and another one is juvenile justice act 2015. So, these are two laws which regulate adoption in India. So, they state who can adopt and who cannot adopt. So, un to regulate under these two laws, one authority was formed central adoption resource authority. So, this CARA, C-A-R-A issued some guidelines to regulate adoption. So, these guidelines of CARA state that married couples who have two years of relationship, who were at least in a relationship of two years can adopt. So, married couples can adopt, married couples can adopt and then a single woman can adopt, single woman not man. Okay. So, a single woman can adopt a child of any gender and a married couple who are of at least two years in relationship can adopt a child. No one else can adopt a child. So, understand that a single man can adopt, okay, reasonable, understandable, but a woman in a relationship without marriage cannot also adopt. So, if there are a couple who are in living in relationship, they do not want to marry, they cannot adopt. So, you are not giving first the right to this queer groups to marry. You are saying because you are not the traditional heterosexual cisgendered couples, so we are not allowing you to marry. So, first of all you are not allowing them to marry, then you are saying you cannot adopt the child without marriage, then you are saying without marriage couples are not allowed. So, that woman herself cannot adopt, normal single woman. So, that woman has to prove she is not in a relationship or um, she is not with anyone to adopt. So, a genuine couple who are in a relationship, even if they are a good parents, they can be a good parents, they can be a nice couple, they are not allowed to marry, they are not allowed to adopt. So, these are very discriminatory provisions. So, the petitioner claimed the same before the Supreme Court. Supreme Court accepted it. Yes, these provisions are discriminatory, we understood. You, we understand your point, uh, you are making a valid point. But unfortunately, Supreme Court stated that. Also, we understood your point, we cannot help you in this thing. Again, even in this thing, parliament has to make a law. If we give some judgment based on judicial views, again, because marriage and adoption in India are related to may, many other entitlements, rights and responsibilities, again, they might get affected. What will happen if this couple later gets divorced? Okay, you allow a couple to adopt a child. So, but in a, after a few years, they get uh, separated. So, who will get the custody of the child? Who will inherit the property of the, uh, uh, whether the child will inherit the property of this couples or not? So, there are many issues related to adoption also, same as marriage. So, judiciary do not want to disturb it without understanding the larger impact. So, only parliament can make a detailed study, can take a stand. So, that is what the Supreme Court has clarified. So, but unlike the previous two things, see if you see in the right to marriage, there are five judges in this case, five judges are sitting in a constitutional bench. Constitutional bench means on a topic which is of high importance that is related to the interpretation of a constitution. Now, we are interpreting whether marriage is a fundamental right or not. So, part three. So, this is directly related to the constitution. Such a constitutional question usually decided by a bench called constitution bench which consists of at least five judges. So, when I say constitution bench, it automatically means there should be at least five judges. So, in this case, five judges have sat down and those judges decided on the issue and they have clarified that 
all five members decided on the first issue said no fundamental right to marriage for same sex couples. So, all five members agreed on this. Second, special marriage act, all five judges agreed that no, you, we cannot enter with special marriage act. But when it comes to adopt, uh, adoption, two judges, two judges said we should have given them the right to adoption, we should give them that right to adoption. But three judges still said no, 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 same like previous ones, we cannot uh, tinker in this also. The majority prevails, so this judgment uh, was issued with 3-2. That means two judges dissented with this judgment, two judges wanted uh, uh, adoption right to this queer group, queer couples. Next one, civil unions for queer couples. So, what is civil union first of all? So, understand that first of all marriage is a very big thing. Okay, as I said marriage has social and legal elements, social and legal elements. But society is not ready yet to recognize the queer group, uh, that queer couples. So, they do not want to allow society or traditional norms does not allow marriages between homosexual couples. So, uh, some kind of middle way we can reach. What is this middle way? In many western countries something called civil union was invented. So, what is civil union? It is smaller than marriage, but it is larger than normal couple without any rights. So, if you take this is a civil union, this imagine Venn diagram. If you take this is a civil union, this is the marriage. That means, married couples have more rights than couples in civil union. A civil union is just purely legal concept. Civil union has no sacredness or no religious sanction, but marriage has a religious sanction. So, marriage is bigger having blood bonds and uh, re relatives etc. Marriage is a bigger concept. Civil union is related to the legal entitlements and responsibilities. All the things I have said, inheritance, uh, insurance etc. Those kind of legal entitlements, civil union will grant the couple, but all the religious aspects, civil union cannot grant them. So, there is a slight difference between civil union and marriage. So, understand that civil union is smaller than marriage and it is only limited to the legal aspect. So, some people said if you cannot grant this marriage rights to the this queer group, please grant them civil union rights, the right to enter into civil union. So, both people will come, both people will sign a document that yes, I am entering into a civil union with this person. So, that means they are legally bounded with each other under some rules and regulations. But even judges rejected that civil union request also. First of all, these petitioners, they themselves are not satisfied with the civil union. They want marriage rights as a first preference because when you say I cannot grant you marriage rights, but I can grant you civil union rights, that means you are automatically saying normal people have marriage rights, you have only this right. So, you, your relationship is inferior to the relationship of the normal heterosexual cisgendered couple. So, they do not want that secondary treatment. They preferably be wanted marriage rights, but if marriage rights could not be granted, civil union right would have been a middle way, but court rejected that too also. This also reached with 3 to judgment, ok. So, again those two judges who have dissented in the adoption issue, they have also dissented in this case also. So, now this editorial. So, in our current um, newspaper today, so this is the editorial on the judgment of the Supreme Court. So, our author is saying, Supreme Court should have not done this because now all the rights and all the years of fight for equality of these people will go years backwards because this is not a judgment in tune with the 2023. So, that is what the author is saying. So, Supreme Court's refusal to accord legal recognition to marriages between persons of the same sex is a huge legal setback for these communities who are fighting for equality for so many years. Over the years, uh, amplitude of Article 21 of Constitution has been expanded to cover the rights of privacy, dignity and marital choice. So, if you see, this is the judgment, Potaswami of Union of India have told you, this judgment has said that privacy is a fundamental right. So, whatever some people do within their four walls of the house, it is their right, you cannot peek into it and you cannot certainly judge it. So, privacy is a fundamental right. When this privacy declared as a fundamental right by the Supreme Court. Now, the ambit of Article 21, please see Article 21 of Constitution, it is regarding life and personal liberty, ok. So, just read Article 21, it is just one line, but it has so many rights under it. So, 
under article 21 now supreme court has interpreted right to privacy now after right to privacy became a fundamental right now there is another judgment now that's in johar versus union of india in 2018 in this case law in this judgment because now fundamental right is a uh, privacy is a fundamental right already declared as a fundamental right now based on this judgment supreme court judges in this case in this nothing now they think johar case they decided that yes when two homosexual couple does something secretly if they engage in a sexual activity within their house within away from the public in a private space in their personal lives it comes under the right to privacy so till then there is something called ipc indian penal code one section of this ipc is saying no no two homosexuals cannot uh, engage in a sexual activity it is a crime so till 2018 sex between two homosexual people is a crime but this now that singh johar judgment clarified that because right to privacy is a fundamental right if some people does this sexual activity privately within their house or in private spaces it is not a crime so this, this now that singh johar judgment decriminalized homosexual activity that is related to the only physical union or intercourse only not marriage rights decriminalized only intercourses next shakti vahini and union of india in this case court said that every adult has a right to choose his partner okay supreme court has stated in shakti vahini case every person has a right to choose his partner so through various cases court has interpreted right to privacy dignity and marital choice etc but the court has stopped short of the extra step needed to allow the marriages of civil unions that are needed that are not heterosexual so even after this evolution through these three cases next logical step would have been recognizing the marriages of this queer group but court has not done it court has taken a backward step and all of this resembled a positive step towards the future but the yesterday's judgment resembling a backward step so in effect court has accepted government's view that move to legalize same sex marriages will fall in the legislative domain till the beginning of this case whenever this case went to the court government of india is making only one argument only one argument continuously it is saying it is my right it is the right of the parliament to make laws please uh, supreme court do not get involved in this please maintain that balance of power checks and balances respect the constitution please leave it to us whether we allow same sex marriages or not it is the legislative or the um, power not the judicial power so they are claiming in that way yesterday court has concurred with it the right to seek social and legal validation through marriage is a matter of individual choice protected by the constitution but this author is saying whether you uh, recognize it or not the right to marry right to marry a person you like is inherent in the constitution it is a very fundamental right it is very deeply rooted to our human nature so it should have been recognized there is no disagreement among the judges about the right of such same sex couples to cohabit and be free from coercion and threat as i said only right to marriage as a fundamental right is not recognized not that they can live in same space or threats on them okay so everyone everyone in the society should accept if two homosexual people lives with each other okay if they are in a living or some kind of similar relationship society should accept it it is their right it is their right to cohabit but not to marry again they should be free from coercion and threat so it is the responsibility of police to ensure that there will be no attacks on such kind of people there should be tolerance between the people of different sexes and different sexual orientation next given that large section of india may be opposed to the legalization of same sex marriages on religious and cultural grounds the possibility of parliament taking the initiative to do so is very big so government is continuously saying leave this to the parliament leave this to the parliament leave this to the politicians we will take care of it but we all know because of political reasons and majoritarian reasons parliament will not allow the same sex marriages because now politicians are already using this issue as a political uh, hot topic okay political agenda so they are seeing whoever allows this same sex marriages whoever supports the same sex marriages as somewhat extreme person extreme minded in fact unfortunately 
uh, the person who is representing the government has used a term in the Supreme Court, uh, a term called urban elitist concept. So, basically government said only some rich people from the urbans are homosexual. No normal person living in rural area or a poor family is, uh, is a homosexual. So, homosexuality is a state of mind that happens only in rich people in urban area. So, that is very unfortunate statement, but that is a political scenario. Okay. So, politicians always uh, sides with the conservative group. So, parliament there are low chances that parliament may make it a law as it is claiming. A LGBTQ community may now have to take heart from the court's direction that government should form a committee to decide the rights and entitlements of the queer couple. So, one small, small relief in all of this is that court has recommended government to form a committee, please form a committee and check that whatever the rights you can give to these queer couples, please give it to them. Whatever the rights that can be allowed to give, please give, give them to it. So, you should form a committee for that, that is what the court has stated. So, it is, that is with the article, please relate this to the constitution part in GS2 syllabus. This is directly related to the constitution in GS2 and also government interventions in various sectors. Next one, Wildlife Protection Act. So, first see the title, when tigers and jackals get the same protection. So, author is frustrated with some recent amendment which treats tigers and jackals in a equal space. Okay. So, first understand here, there is an act called Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, what, the, what does this Wildlife Protection Act does? It is a legal framework to provide protection to various species of animals and plants. So, in 1972, parliament has brought an act to protect animals and plants through various levels of protection. Okay. So, they are making a list of plants and animals, schedules. Okay. So, they are classifying that some animals these are very important and these should be protected at any cost. And some other animals or plants, these are less important. Okay, these are protected, these needs to be protected, but no need to be as severe of this. Okay. So, if I kill a tiger, I, I get awarded a, some other punishment, very severe punishment. If I kill a street dog, a dog in the street, which we can see in every street, so I will get a lesser punishment. So, there will be degree of variations based on the animal. So, these animals are classified in schedules in this act and these schedules offer different levels of protection. Now, this act was amended recently in 2022. Now, the author is saying, this act is saying I am rationing, rationalizing the schedule. See, he is marking by highlighting the word rationalization. Okay. So, this act says earlier there are six schedules, six lists. Schedule means an attachment at the end of the act. So, schedule means an attachment at the end of the act. It is nothing but a list. So, earlier there were six lists classifying animals, now they have become four. Through this amendment, they have rationalized it. But the author is saying this rationalization is not as per a particular logic or consultation or feedback or an, with any particular object too. It seems they have done randomly with very intuitive thinking. So, author is quite frustrated with the recent amendment. So, this is the recent amended uh, schedules. So, these are the schedules in Wildlife Protection Act now. So, there are four schedules offering different levels of protection. The first two schedules are animals, third one is plant species, fourth one is something called listed in sites. Okay. Convention on internal trade of endangered species etc. There is a sites convention, you will read an environment GS3. So, there are four schedules now in Wildlife Protection Act. So, all of these ecologists are frustrated with the recent amendment of the government because the classification of animals and plants in the schedules is without any consultation, objective or logic. Because it is not uh, made logically, there are some issues with the recent amendment. What are the issues? Nowhere in the act, there is a clear connection between endangerment and con conservation. So, when an animal is more endangered, it should be better protected. If you see, few years back, tiger numbers are very falling in India. So, if you take by the year 2015-16, government is worried that number of tigers in India are getting reduced every year, even in 1970s also. So, they have brought something called Project Tiger. In 1970s, they have brought something called Project Tiger. 
it, it is introduced in 1973 project tiger so this project tiger uh, after implementation of this project tiger by 2020 our numbers of tigers have improved improved drastically so now we have saved tigers from extinction if you take lions in india lion now lions in india are exist only in gujarat only in gujarat nowhere outside of gujarat lions are available in india so lions are you can say some rare species lions are not available throughout india so lions should receive some kind of special protection so whatever the protection you are offering it should be based on some logic but this act does not do such thing okay there is no connection between conservation and endangerment so which is more endangered that means which is more threatened should be better conserved prioritization of species is not being done when you prioritize species you can uh, manage them better how uh, you have some limited amount of money uh, our resources are always limited now government has some money for conservation to which animal it should invest more so prioritization needs to be done before doing this kind of schedules next the same level of protection being offered to the tigers and jackals as i have said tigers are rare very important to the ecosystem jackals are too many and people people are getting trouble by this kind of jackals so jackals are not ecologically or to human are more important as tiger but they receive same kind of protection again great indian bustard and common barn owls so common owls and great indian bustard great indian bustard is a rare bird which is found only in western india and it is very less in number it is facing many threats like electric fences etc so the numbers of great indian bustard are increasing day by day common owls are found everywhere but this act treats both of them equally so there are many illogical aspects in this laws So, some other issues with the act, next is it might result in adverse consequences. So the first issue with the act we have seen is that it, it treats many normal and important animals at the same level. Similarly, it, second issue is that it might have some adverse consequences. One is if you see the issue, one is spotted death, this is find across India and another one is um, so this if you see what are the advanced adverse consequences this spotted deer is found across india and it has some negative consequences also in andaman islands if you see in andaman islands some, uh, some animals are having threats because of this deer again crocodiles people are getting attacked by crocodiles in andaman and many animals like wild pigs etc threaten our vegetation also so threaten our vegetation and disturb the crops of the farmers also so but this act does not take care of rights of such farmers and cultivators and when people get killed it does not even respect the lives of the people livelihoods of the people let's say some people uh, traditionally do hunting in forest for so many years but suddenly this act got amended and killing such small very less useful animal also became a crime so this act has many issues like adverse consequences and uh, lack of respect for rights of farmers and cultivators and lack of respect for livelihood of people okay so because of this act even those animals which are danger to human and which are danger to our food security cannot be culled okay culling means allowing killing legally killing versus culling so what are some other issues as of now getting permits for research is a very difficult issue but this act because now it is amended in a very illogical way now the uh, getting permits for research become more more difficult okay more tedious next all these three issues conservation we have discussed people issues livelihood and uh, crop issues and their security etc and research all these three issues need to be attended exclusively in different degrees of urgency whose lives are at stake needs to be safeguarded first if you see recently in kerala and tamil nadu an elephant wreaked havoc in that region okay many people got killed by the elephant 
and occasionally you will hear something called man eater tiger. So, some tigers, tigers normally do not eat humans, but some tigers got habited to the meat of the humans and they come into the habitations of humans to eat humans. So, some animals threaten the very lives of the humans. So, those kind of people needs to be safeguarded first, not that animals because of our blind logic. So, management actions for species habitat needs to be tailored with ecology, species biology and context. Okay, you want to save animals, you want to do conservation, but do with the proper procedures. Take consideration of the ecology, species biology and context. Okay. So, understand all the things, do proper research. If you cannot do, use a third party agency, but do a reasonable initiatives, not just blind actions, reasonable actions, researched actions. So, that is what the, this article is about. This is directly linked to the biodiversity part of the GS3. This is our last article. This is very small article, just two minutes only. Uh, actually, there is nothing much in this article. See, in the title itself, everything is conveyed. Centralized procurement is a powerful, healthy idea. So, just to see, just to understand that, if you have heard about something called McDonald, wherever in India or wherever in USA, if you go to McDonald, everything will be uniform in shape and size, in quality also. And more or less prices, prices will also be same. So, how this is being done? Author is saying, this big franchises like McDonald always go for a centralized pooling or centralized buying method. What is this centralized buying method? There are 10,000 outlets of McDonald in USA. Not every outlet buys separately. Whatever they need, potato or meat, they do not buy it separately. All of the deals are being made by one authority at the center. So, they ensure the better price because they buy in bulk. They get for a better price and they make the minimum requirements for quality and those quality requirements are implemented all throughout the country. So, quality is ensured equally in all the outlets. There is uniformity in prices, quality and shapes, etc. So, when you do centralized buying, pooled buying, that means buying in a bulk quantity for so many entities at once, you will have some advantages like better availability, that means products will be more available, better price, better quality and uniformity, etc. But when you do it decentralized way, in a decentralized way, like um, there are 10 outlets across India, one outlet in Andhra does something, one outlet in Kerala does something, one outlet in Uttar Pradesh does something. So, the quality of the outlet varies in Uttar Pradesh and the quality of outlet in Andhra Pradesh varies. So, this kind of non-uniformity will have some disadvantages. So, author is saying, India is buying so many medicines across the country, in many states medicines are useful for cancers, etc. There are some requirements for rare medicines. And these are needed across the India, but central government for some reason is not buying through this centralized pooling. Central government can do this that it can buy for all the outlets at once in a centralized way uh, by determining the price at central level and by determining the quality at the central level, everything at the central level so that there is a uniformity across the country in insurance policies, etc. See, these are three schemes. Author is giving an, giving an example. Take the case of Pradhan Mantri Jan Ayush Yojana. So, in this scheme, if you see, it is an health insurance scheme. Government allows up to 5 lakh health insurance. So, any eligible family can go to the go to a hospital and they can avail treatment up to 5 lakh per year. So, a person goes to a hospital for dengue fever, let us say in Andhra. He gets treatment for dengue for 10,000 rupees. But if the if another person for the same dengue fever he goes to hospital in Gujarat, he receives twenty thousand bill. The medicine receives received by him is different from the medicines received by him. So there is a vast difference in medicines in quality and cost etc. So, so this is an example of PM Janai Shojana. So those kind of illogical things as of now being done in India, author does not understand why central government cannot do this centralized buying. So, that is what the basic point. So, he is saying centralized buying is a powerful idea, please implement it. That is it. That is what in this article, nothing more, all, all the things in just the title itself. So, that is with our current editorial analysis for today. Uh, we will be uploading all the news articles related to prelims as a separate video. Please keep following us every day. Thank you.